what's up everyone it's silly girl carmen we are here with another episode of wonderful and i'm happy to be sitting here with katie how are you doing today i'm good thank you not bad do you do you go just by katie or do you have a, a, a full name with that no i mean i just use my name which is there katie goodman is my full like my normal name so but you yes. can call me katie it's a bit of a mouthful to keep saying katie goodman on an interview <laughs> Right. Just just so I know to introduce you fully. So Katie Goodman. Okay. Um, so where are you originally from and where are you currently based? So I am from Essex in London. Well, it's Greater London and I'm still based here. I mean, we work, I work in London, but we're pretty much just on the outskirts. I'm about an hour into the city. So yeah, Essex girl through and through, been here my whole life really and still here. <laughs> okay, nice. Very cool. Um, so I want to ask you, how long have you been DJing? And for you, what do you feel like keeps the passion and inspiration s s sustaining for you in the process of being a DJ? Uh, so I started DJing like 10 years ago now, which feels really strange. Yeah. But like DJ career sort of had quite a lot of like different sections. Like when I first started, I was DJing very much just like local bars, local clubs um around Essex which was like fantastic and then I was lucky enough uh, about five years ago to get signed to Glitterbox which is um a label over here which is a sub label of defected um uh, house label and Glitterbox is the disco side of things mm -hmm. um so that kind of like re I guess like reignited like a different passion for DJing because uh being like signed to a label means you have to obviously sort of um shape yourself around what the label expects and like when you're playing you're representing the label so that kind of like started a new journey for me with the DJ in and it's pretty like I get to play quite exciting gigs and it's also nice because it splits it up if I'm playing for a glitter box event or if I'm playing as myself it's like two very different styles that I get to play around with so it keeps it fun and um yeah like interesting and uh always things to be like diving for and different sets to create and yeah keeps it dynamic so nice very cool um that led me into my next question actually I know you are collect connected to Glitterbox as you said can you tell us more about the start of that relationship how did that come about working with a brand like that yeah so I um I wanted to work for Defected like for, for, from a very young age I probably wanted to work for Defected more than I wanted to be a DJ like for, uh, originally Mm -hmm. And then uh, did everything I could like to try and get a job with the company. I was like working for like events that I knew had hosted their parties and like Ministry of Sound, which I knew had regular defected events and just basically trying to find a way in. Um, and eventually I got my way in. I mean, it took quite a long time and uh, it was quite a journey. But I mean, you learn things along the way. And then it was my first year at the company. So I wasn't, when I started, I started in uh, marketing, which is where I still am as well. And um, uh, I was DJing separate to Glitterbox and Defected on the side. Mm -hmm. And then I played the first, we have this um, festival in Croatia, which is amazing, Defected Croatia. Mm -hmm. And I was like fortunate enough to be put on the lineup, which was so great. And then it was there actually that I got signed um, I think it was because I remember I was playing like the last day and like every it had been very, very housey. And because I didn't think anything of it, I thought it was just like a throwaway set that they'd sort of given me because like it was just like one of those that it was just nice to have. We're quite an all rounded company. We do that. We do have everyone's quite included. Mm -hmm. So I kind of went a bit like off piste and played like sort of really old soul records and like old R&B and like. Things I think you would look at me and think at the time, I mean, I was 22, be like, well, that, like, how does she know this music? And um, yeah, I must have impressed Simon Dunmore, who was the boss at the time, who signed me that that festival. It was um, it was a very fun day, actually. I had the rest of the day to work, but I do remember me and my best friend. I had like vodka on my rider and <laughs> we were celebrating and it was like 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Uh. But uh, yeah, that was how it started. And then it's, nice. yeah, I mean, obviously beyond grateful, so. Nice, very cool. So how how long has it been since you worked with the company with Glitterbox and Defected? So six, six years in January, which is just crazy. Like I just yeah. started, 
I mean, to be fair though, we did have lockdown, so that's like right. Kind that kind of like, took time away. <laughs> yeah, that feels like a year. Well, I mean, we were actually really busy in lockdown because we were doing live oh, streams. Right, it's not the same as like the like. It feels like you had a year out of the job. So right, that also, makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So very just- cool. I love that. I love to hear that. That's very interesting that you were saying you kind of were pushing, you wanted to work more with the brand even before you thought, oh, I just want to be like a, a huge DJ or something. What What was your initial, I know you said you work in marketing. What was your initial interest being associated with the brand that you just wanted to be in music or? Yeah, like I mean, position? it's really hard. I remember like loving and defected, like growing up, just obsessed with the parties. Like I didn't really... Mm out to like little I wasn't really like a sort of pub like out person or anything like that and I just loved defective and then when I was I actually started university which I did leave and I remember they brought out the first glitter box radio show and it was just like I don't know I just remember listening and like I didn't even know that like that I was into like that kind of music I didn't even I I mean I, I was I just didn't know where the home for it was and I just remember like hearing the show and just thinking like I need to be involved with that brand like somehow Mm -hmm. and then at the marketing side of things just sort of evolved because when I was younger I um I started promoting for like local clubs and then sort of worked my way up in there and I started being like the in-house promo like for my local clubs and I would be booking talent and like organizing the nights and the artwork and Mm -hmm. it's just one of those things where like life sort of I mean if you'd asked me 10 years ago like do you want to like, what do you want to do in that brand? I wouldn't have been able to answer it, but it's just found a way of evolving and like becoming something that I'm actually really good at and that I love, so. Nice, yeah. okay, great. That makes sense for sure. Um, so another question I want to ask you, uh, what are you hoping to see change or develop more in the music DJ scene or something that you feel like was is missing that you hope comes back or just any perspectives on the climate of the the music and DJ scene or party scene? Yeah, so I mean, I think it's like not the elephant in the room anymore to say that obviously we want to see a more inclusive lineup um, from all minorities, queer, females, black, like of we everyone wants more inclusive lineups. It's something that has been a hot topic in our scene for such a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously being part of a minority, like a female, I totally want to see that happen. I think that like there has definitely been a change like in the last five years, like a hundred percent. And I mean, with anything, it's never enough and it's always a continuous like learning process and journey. And but it is nice to see bigger companies and bigger brands like fighting for a more inclusive lineup. I would say like in that, like from my perspective of it, I want to see more females like working in the industry and like from all aspects like media teams and Mm -hmm. inside the office and like um just sort of yeah putting themselves forward a bit more and out there a bit more and like because you've got the sort of top female djs at the minute that are sort of ruling the house and disco world and we just like we just need more of them really that's like what i want to change i mean obviously the long standing phone argument i mean i do i do like the i do I'm not an anti-phone person on the on the dance floor. Like if, if I'm having a moment and I want to remember it, remember it, I'll get it out. But yeah. I think you could see the difference between like people that are in the moment and they're like, oh my gosh, I need to film this because I'm like loving it. And people that are just stand there like waiting to film it. And it's like, mm-hmm. that's a pet hate. Like you can tell straight away if you're in the dance floor and you're standing next to someone who doesn't want to be there, it's just like, don't be there. Like just right. <laughs> for the sake of a video. Yeah, it's, like the main I, thing. I guess for me, when actually you said that it made me think about it for the first time, I feel like it's kind of this new melting pot of people that were actually always original music or party lovers, whether they were originally lovers of house and all these DJs. And then it now because it's becoming more popular, it's also a known spectacle. So you also have a new crowd of people that are coming in just like, don't really know why I'm here, but this yeah. is the oh. thing to do, you know, like, yeah. so... Yeah. It's hard that's to say. Worst. Yeah, that's the worst kind of person, the ones that don't know why they're there. And they're <laughs> like definitely, a, yeah, definitely an epidemic of, a, of that kind of new wave. But I am a firm believer in like, it won't take them long, it won't take long to get rid of those people. If they really like, 
they'll come, they'll get their videos. Eventually they'll get sick of coming and then it'll be back to like the real right. fast loving right. crowd. <laughs> Well, yeah, I guess it's like the the pros and the cons. Like it's growing and attracting new people, the scene in a sense, and the music. But yeah, it's like, okay, are you adding to the party or are you just, you know, like making the space weird? <laughs> yeah, literally, the energy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're going to wrap it up with one more question. Pretty simple. Hopefully you've already thought about it or, or had to do it already. What would be your dream back-to-back -back set with someone? Dream, oh, do you know what? J to J. Oh, nice. Yes. Uh, that like came to me like straight away. Yeah. I just like, I mean, to be honest though, I don't know if I would because the energy, like, the dancing, I'm like, I think I would end up just, I'd just be like, <laughs> like this. And <laughs> she'd be like giving it like everything. Yeah. Like, no, I can't. I don't know what to do here. <laughs> but like, yeah, her energy, like, I think she is just like the ultimate queen of the scene right now for me. And just the fact that like, I mean, I've learned out. I've learned so much about her. Like, got the whole environmentalist aspect of her career is very interesting. And mm -hmm. yeah, I think yeah, I think J to G back to back. Yeah, that would be my choice for now. Nice, that's a good one. Yeah, I was gonna say. Well, yeah, you were saying like you wouldn't be able to keep up with the dancing, but maybe she would inspire you. There wouldn't be any choice but yeah. to move and like get with it. <laughs> yeah, you no, couldn't good. stand still, could you really? Right. It sound. It does sound like a fun one. So I like that. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Katie, for coming on here. Um, I look forward to sharing your mix and connecting with you more in the future. Have you, I must ask, have you ever been to Detroit? Have you been to Detroit? Uh, no, do you know what? We had a, a, an event over there defected this year, but unfortunately I couldn't come, but I'm desperate. It's very much on my list. Yes, okay, awesome. Well, hopefully we connect, with, whether you're over here or I'm over there, we can connect more in the future. Yeah. But yes, yeah. thank you again. No worries, thanks for having me. This is the way.